He says, I am the true vine. Come on. And I'm the realist. And here's the thing about me. Because I'm real, I keep it real. Wow. He goes on to say in the next part of this verse, verse 2, he says, he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. So you know the friends that lie to you? Mm. And they tell you, oh, that looks good on you when it doesn't. Wow. Yeah. Like you're trying on new skinny jeans and you're like, girl, what you think? And they're like, oh, girl, you're killing the game. But the fact of the matter is you're not skinny enough. But they don't tell you that. Yikes. No. Yikes. Not you. The other, other people. people. <laughs> if you're in a relationship with someone, I want you to keep it real with me. Yeah. Right. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I want you to tell me the truth. And he yeah. says, we're going to be in a relationship together. Guess what? I'm going to tell you the truth. Yeah. So if there's anything that you're a part of or that's a part of you, I'm going to remove it from your life. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will become more Fruitful. That's so hmm. good. Yeah. There is a huge difference between what needs to get cut off and what needs to get cut. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. What needs to get cut off are the things that produce no life. Mm -hmm. There is no life in hate. There is no life in lust. There is no life in anger. There's no life in any of those things. He says, we got to cut that off. However, there is life in love. There is life in self-control. When he tells you, go apologize, and you're the one that didn't do anything wrong, it's because he's trying to stretch you, and he's trying to grow you, and that girl got on your last nerve, but the fact of the matter is, it wasn't your last nerve, because you had the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will lead you, and he'll help you, and he'll guide you, and although you feel frustrated, and you feel depleted because you are full of the Holy Spirit. You don't have a last nerve. You could apologize. You could yeah. love. You could yeah. forgive even yeah. though you've forgiven them a million times before. Yeah. Why? Because we serve a God that never stops forgiving yeah. us. Yeah. If he never stops forgiving us, then we never stop forgiving them. Yeah, come on. He says, let me prove you because where you're at is good, but it's not where I need you to be. And the fact is, all that is is an answer to prayer. Because we say, God, I want to be the man you want me to be. I want to be the woman that you want me to be. I want to be the parent to that child. I want to be the friend to that friend. I want to be the servant. I want to be the worker. Mm. Well, if that's going to happen, it doesn't just happen because you requested it. Right. It doesn't just happen by osmosis. It happens by him putting you in a situation wow. where you actually have to deal with it. So we say, God, I want self-control. He may put you in a position where you could possibly cut loose or... You could have self-control. Yeah. 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 He'll allow you to be in a place where you can be unfaithful and maybe no one else knows about it, but God knows about it and you know about it and he wants to see you grow in your faithfulness. Right. Yeah. See, if we pray it, then we have to be okay to walk through it. Yeah. That's why he goes on to say, the first believer who is maybe new to the faith or feels embarrassed about the decisions they've made, they say to themselves, I got to go back and fix it all. So I could come back and be in the place yeah. so I could go through this process. Yeah. But God goes, no, you're wow. fine just yeah. as you are. Yeah. I've spoken over you. It's nothing that you can do. It's nothing yeah. that you will do. Yeah. It's because of what I did on that cross, the word that I've spoken over you, I say, come as you are. Yeah. But then you have, on the other hand, the other believer that is following God and is going through the pruning process, but then makes a mistake and becomes completely overwhelmed that they made a mistake. They were on the track, then they fell off track. And when they fall off track, they either come back or they leave. And he's like, no, just because you stopped the process doesn't mean you couldn't continue in the process. In fact, you continue in the process. It doesn't mean that you stop and I'm getting rid of you because of the word that I've spoken over you, yeah. because that I've called you to be a man of God, because yeah. I called you to be a woman. When I say, God, I'm going to give up what you want me to give up so that I can be who it is you want me to be. The word of God says as a result of that, you are going to receive abundance. You're going to hold on to maybe what you think you need. However, he says, you don't need it. What I have for you is greater. Yeah. And what I love about this quote, what the quote says, if you want the abundance, then you have to abide. And if you're going to abide, then you must obey. Wow. Abide suggests that I stay. Obey says that I'm with it regardless of the program. Wow. So I'm going to abide in you and I'm going to stay with you regardless what that looks like. I'm going to obey when I don't want to obey. Wow. I'm going to do when I don't want to do. When you're telling me to be generous and I don't want to be generous, I'm going to be generous. Wow. When you tell me to turn the other cheek, I'm going to turn the other cheek, yeah. even though I don't feel like turning yeah. the other cheek, and I'm all out of cheeks. I turned all four. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you guys got that. Good job. <laughs> In order 
to abide, you must obey. That's great. But be encouraged. Because abundance is the byproduct of abiding and obeying. That's great. Mm. That's great. The truth is, he's putting us in the perfect position to receive more. Mm. Not the more that we want, mm. the more that he has. But how many of us know what he has is better yeah. than anything yeah. we can yeah. want? Yeah. 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 This is why in our relationship with Jesus, we have to make sure, we have to make sure that we are being consistent. Live on your own, however, there's no life outside of him. Wow. Mm. I want you to write that down. You can live on your own, yeah. however, there is no life outside of him. This is why he says in John 15, 5, he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit, but apart from me, you can do nothing. Wow. If you remain in me, you'll live the life. If you don't, you won't. But here's the thing. If you're going to remain in me and you're going to live this life and you're going to be about this life, then here's what's going to happen. I need to see the life. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I need, to, I need to see the fruit growing. I need to see it because you can't just be talking about it. I don't want you to appear like you're living. I want the evidence. 